Henry Fonda, uh, Mr. Cohen, you cut yourself off by leading into the commercial. You can finish that sentence at any point during the show that you feel like. Uh, is it, Henry Fonda is another of the famous people who will be presenting Emmys on, I mean, t <laughs> Tony's on the uh, <laughs> Sunday night's Tony Award show. Uh, well, Emmy's the name of the lady who puts the awards together, actually. Uh, <laughs> Emmy, Emmy Needleman, uh, she glosses and polishes them up and gets them ready. And he's one of the most admired uh, actors, certainly, on earth. And uh, I've never heard of his giving a bad performance. Will you welcome Mr. Henry Fonda? secrets here tonight. <laughs> Did you hear that woman say someplace like Nebraska or somewhere? You were on off stage in the green room at yes. the time. Didn't I comment? What Absolutely. did you say? I said, don't you knock it or something like that. And right sure. away you said. <laughs> I, I knew, I knew. I don't know why they, it why they do that. It was intentional. These, I know. These swell-headed Easterners. Texas. <laughs> Texas, 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 right. I knew all that. <laughs> Very nice to see you. Say, speaking, speaking of awards, uh, there was the Oscar show the other night. Just did the any, other day, yeah. Did anyone you know win anything? Yeah. <laughs> Named Jane. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I thought she conducted herself very well, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that was the most pregnant pause in the whole evening. That's right. She held it just long enough. Uh -huh. And everybody in that Dorothy Chandler Pavilion and probably 800 million people watching were all holding their breath, too. That's right. To I think it was just wonderful. Yeah. It was very theatrical. It's the old fun instinct, of course. Uh, yes. Yeah. Say, did, did, how long does a person have to know you to call you Hank? I think you've known me long enough. This is at least the third or fourth time. Oh, I, I wasn't asking oh, you? For, oh. for myself. Oh. I just wondered if... I, it would be right, nice, of course. Usually but I mean, right away. Every so often somebody will call you mm. Hank that I wonder if, if they've ever... If they've met you or not, I know. I mean, Peter used to know. Lots of is a friend of yours. Very he close. Sure that, but yeah, so. but because it's known to be my nickname, yeah. taxi drivers call me Hank, who have never seen me. And that's all right. That doesn't bother you. No. What do you do though when you are bothered? I mean, suppose you're in a restaurant and a guy says, "Hey, Fonda, come over here, sit here, put on my wife's hat for a minute, and let me take your picture, <laughs> and uh, you know, and uh, we'll send it home and everything, and then have a cup of coffee with us. We'll go out and have a few belts and." You know these guys who do I the, do, and it yeah. doesn't happen to me a lot, but it has happened, and I'm usually, fortunately, with somebody, my yeah. wife or somebody else, yeah. who restrains me. <laughs> <laughs> restrains you. I'm glad to hear that. Say, what is a Plumstead Playhouse? What is it? A, a pl yes. Well, there, the first theater in America was a converted warehouse in Philadelphia uh -huh. called the Plumstead Playhouse. Yeah. The owner of the warehouse was probably named Plumstead. Later, there was a Plumstead, a mayor of Philadelphia. Anyway, when Martha Scott and I and Bob Ryan and some others were forming this organization and just looking for a name almost arbitrarily, Martha Scott came up with this name, and we call it that just because it's, uh, it's sort of arbitrary to call it that now. We are dreaming of one day being the National Theater, which this country deserves to have, has never had. And, if, uh, and you're doing a play now? No, we closed know. a week ago. Oh, did, did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, I or I could track be this. here. Because oh, we closed right. in Los you, Angeles. You, play, well, you, you don't play repertoire, a repertoire then? No. You just do, we, you, we, no, it wasn't really repertoire. Time of your we life did, We did uh, Our Town and Front Page, one right after the other, but it yeah. wasn't true repertory. We did, used the same you, cast. Time of Your Life? The r most recent thing we did was yeah. Time of Your Life, which yeah. we played Washington, Philadelphia, Chicago, and closed in Los Angeles. Yeah. You know. Say, that reminds me of something, because I was thinking of Clive Barnes, a Times critic, who said you in that role made, somehow made it work for him in a way that the play never had before. And they've always said that the worst thing about the New York theater is that one reviewer in the major paper can close a show. And so they sort of split the, ch the uh, chore on the Times, and uh, Walter Kerr will disagree often with Clive Barnes, uh, but they both write in the Times. Has that split helped what it was supposed to help, or can the Times... Opening night know. review still close the show. Anyway. No, I think that the split has helped. Um, and the specific example that I can think of was a play that uh, Clive Bonds, the daily critic, did not like called 40 Carats uh -huh. with Julie Harris. 
And um, then on Sunday, Walter Kerr raved about it. And that rave, I think, turned the tide for that play. So, and it was very successful and ran a year. And it's now an institution. Now, there, there were three companies playing in Chicago when we were doing Time of Your Life. Three co companies of 40 carats, different. Uh, and it became a big hit movie. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But I think that is one example, and I think there have been several more. Well, but most times they agree. For example, just recently, the Phil Silvers review. You know, you, mm -hmm. I read Clive Bonds on Phil Silvers in a funny thing. And I said, nobody can write a better review. It will never happen. And on Sunday, Walter Kerr came out and wrote a better review. And um, Wait a minute. you find them substantially in agreement. There are a couple of heavyweights. Are you supposed to are. review the critics? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. no, you're not supposed to. But I do it because I don't share with my colleagues uh, dislike for the critics. I think they're very sound, most That's of fine. them, and I like them. And I, they never panned a show of mine that didn't deserve to be panned. Sometimes you don't know that except retrospectively. But I think they're heavyweights, and particularly Bonds and Kerr. I'm glad to know. If they can only, if that problem's been solved, now if they could do something about that dreadful orange drink that they sell in the theaters. You bet. I, I know this has been, if you've ever, if you're coming to New York, uh, be warned, uh, unless you like something that tastes like uh, uh, wax-flavored water and sells for, what's it up to, 35 or 45 cents? I don't, I don't drink it, so I don't know. 50 cents, if you Is please. it really? 50, 50 cents. cents, and it's, it's outrageous is what it is. And the Staten Island Ferry is still only a nickel or whatever it is. <laughs> If you had to, uh, did it, I don't know if I asked you this before, I don't think so, because uh, if you had to uh, grab off of the shelf four cans of film of the movies you've made uh, to put in the time capsule before the world blew up, um, what, uh, <laughs> what four would, uh, would you grab? Okay, four uh, cans. Four, four, oh, wait, one well, film one, takes I, four cans. Oh, one film takes four cans. Mm -hmm. So the question's easier than I thought. I mean, it's <laughs> harder than I thought. I mean, I, I was just going to say uh, uh, four movies, uh, three or four movies. Well, 12 Angry Men has to be on the list because it's the only, that's my easy writer. It. I produced it, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I was, it was a little slow writer. coming there. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I'm proud of that on more yeah. than one level. I think Grapes of Wrath has to be on the list because it's become a minor classic. Yeah. But that's only two and I'm beginning to stutter. And that's I made it about 76. Yeah. And you haven't mentioned Mr. Roberts right away. No. Could that be that you were tired of it by the time you made the no, film? You'd played no, it so long? No. no. I think Alec could, uh, would agree or would understand. When you've done a play as long as I did Mr. Roberts, and I did it for four years, yeah. 16, 1,700 performances, you become a purist about that play. And I wasn't the only one. Everybody that was involved with that play we hated the picture because it took liberties. Yes. Some Not maybe liberties, but the wrong kind of liberties. Fooled with the pure, the pure thing right. itself. That's right, they, they fooled yeah. with it. Uh, say, did you know that a guy burned Grand Island once? No, I didn't know that. You know that we were from Gra both from Grand Island. We both, we're <laughs> we both, just to get even for Nebraska now, we both lived in Grand Island at very at different times and all. Mm -hmm. and I, I found one of those old F Federal Writers Project, I tourist books one time, and years back, Grand Island, uh, what do you suppose the odds are against the fact that Grand Island's being discussed on another program at this very moment? Uh, it was uh, uh, in the 18, early 1800s, a, a trapper going through to the west set fire to the grass around and burned the town down because he hated Germans. And he had heard that Grand Island was a German community. This is in the middle of the 1800s. My relatives, were many of them were German, about a fourth of them. Are, were any of yours? No. Did you lose any great-great-grandparents in the fire? Or? No, because we didn't have, uh, I didn't have ancestors in Grand Island. My yeah. father had moved to Grand Island because his business took him there temporarily, and I was yeah. born there, but yeah. brought back to Omaha when I was six months old, and that's the extent of my yeah. residence in Grand Island. Six months. No fires during that time. <laughs>